A new report suggests BC's housing market is in the midst of a recession that could last for at least three years. Joining us now for analysis on this is real estate analyst, author, mortgage investment advisor, Peter Kinch. Peter joins us from our newsroom. And Peter, can you give us an overview of the Central One Credit Union report? Well, quite frankly, it's uh, something that's really not predictable. Uh, they're saying that there's going to be a correction in the housing market. The prices are going to slow down. But guess what? We've seen activity being tapered off for the last, what, three, four, five, six months, depending on whether you're talking about condos or single-family detached homes. Uh, and the detached single-family housing market, activity's been off for over a year. So it's just natural that eventually the prices are going to catch up and we're going to see a softening in those pricing. Okay, so how low will the sales fall? <laughs> oh, the magic question, you know. Uh, I think it's going to depend whether you're talking uh, the condo market, townhouse market, or single-family detached market. And you know what, Jennifer, the one thing that I think is really important here is people talk about the BC housing market, the Vancouver housing market. Quite frankly, there's no such thing as a BC housing market or a Vancouver housing market. I mean, if you look at Coal Harbor condos versus uh, New Westminster, for example, versus Surrey, or, you know, pick, pick your spots, every single area is going to be impact it differently. So it is a regional aspect. Uh, I think it's uh, dangerous to say that the market in total is going to drop by 10, 15, 20 percent. Okay. Uh, and so according to you then, this, they do talk about a 17 percent decrease. Uh, did you see that at all? Yeah, we're seeing it. I mean, again, we're seeing a, a, the degree, decrease in um, activity. And we've seen this decrease in activity for a while now, so it's just a matter of time before the decrease in activity is followed by a drop off in pricing. Now, again, I like to refer to this as the perfect storm. The perfect storm has, has been building for a while, and I would almost go so far as to say, to say that this is one of the first housing slowdown that, slow, slowdowns that's been government induced and by that I mean there's been a lot of talk about affordability in our market and both at the federal level and the provincial level they're looking at ways of controlling or dealing with this lack of affordability in the housing market we saw the federal government can come in with a two percent stress test and new mortgage rules and and trust me that has had a bigger impact than anything we've seen in years. Follow that up by the provincial governments uh, addressing vacancy with the vacancy tax, foreign buyers tax, and then you look at the Bank of Canada raising rates all at the same time. And now we're going into the cyc cyclical nature of real estate. We're going into the winter months. December and January, by definition, are typically the slowest months we're ever going to see in the real estate market. So combine all these things together, and it's little doubt that we have a perfect storm that's impacting both activity and pricing. Okay, so then for you, where do you see this going? I think we're going to see a very significant drop off anywhere up to 20% over the winter months. But you know, Jennifer, the biggest thing I'm looking at is if we look at supply and demand economics, the real question here is not whether we're going to have a slowdown in December, January, February. I, that's almost guaranteed. The real question is, how is the spring market going to react to this? Because if you look at it, supply and demand economics, as far as Vancouver is concerned, now I'll speak to Vancouver as opposed to all of British Columbia. Vancouver's always been the most desirable place for people in Canada to live. I, some people might argue that point. but. From a pure numbers factor, we're expecting another 40,000 people to move to Vancouver, whether that's from offshore or intermigration from different provinces. Now, we look at that and say, well, maybe it's been the desirability of Vancouver that drove the prices up in the first place. Or maybe it was speculators and maybe it was foreign buyers. The re reality is we don't quite have those statistics at their fingertips. And that's the challenge when we look at predicting where the spring market's going to come. So, for example, if the pent-up demand was driven by people wanting to live here, my prediction is we'll have a slowdown in December, January, February, followed by a revival of the market in the spring market. However, if, on the other hand, that uh, demand isn't there and that was actually speculative demand that we had previously, we could see a double dip. In other words, if there isn't a resurgence in the spring market, we could see an even lower dip come July and August. Holy moly. And so uh, I guess you can't really tell, but what kind of, you said lower dip, what would that mean? 
Well, it's like a double bounce. Um, I would say that if we see a 10 to 15 percent softening in December and January, if we do not see a recovery in the March, April, spring market, then I would actually predict a 20 to 25 percent correction over the August, uh, July, August summer months. Because again, the cyclical nature of real estate is that's when the slow people people are on holidays. They're they're not going to be buying or active anyway. So um, that would typically have a softening to begin with. It could be compounded and Let's face it, uh, both provincially and um, municipally here in the, with the Vancouver uh, uh, new mayor and city hall, we may not have seen the end of legislative activity uh, addressing affordability. Okay, so how about construction? You'd mentioned supply and mm -hmm. demand. Uh, are construction starts down, will they go down further? I'd say absolutely. And uh, I think if I'm a developer right now, I'm taking a very cautious approach. The last thing I want to do is start really going into uh, new builds and new construction and really put myself out there when we have all this uncertainty. And, you know, a lot of this uh, comes back to what I call consumer psyche. The consumer psyche is shaken right now uh, with all the federal regulations, uh, rising interest rates. Um, Consumers don't know. I mean, I get I get calls all the time by people saying, well, the rate's going to go up five, six, seven percent. We don't know. But I would say this, given the global economic situation right now, the Bank of Canada has clearly decided to take the, their foot off the gas pedal and slow down on rate hikes. But that's not going to be enough to indicate for developers that they should jump in and start increasing on the supply side. Okay. How about renters? Is there any relief for them? Will they get more uh, places to rent? Will there be more? I think uh, there could be a very interesting scenario develop in the, again, winter, spring months. One of the dynamics that I'm going to be watching very closely is new home construction where people bought, pre uh, uh, bought a, a pre-sale three years ago and that pre-sale is now coming on the market. I've heard from some developers as much as 20 to 30 percent of those buyers three years ago won't qualify for the mortgage based on the new mortgage rules today. So that could have an influx of supply into the market that could uh, result in some people having to take possession of something that they really didn't think they were going to. Maybe some of these speculative buyers were going to flip or assign those products and now they can't. Uh, this could all end up having developers absorbing those units and flipping them back in as rental, uh, as part of a, a rental pool or rental units. So we could actually see uh, an increase in rental units on the market in the spring months. Okay, wow, interesting turn yeah. of events. Uh, finally, what's your advice for people getting into the market or who want to sell? Yeah, two total opposite scenarios mm -hmm. there. First of all, <laughs> if you're getting into the market, base everything on affordability. It's a very dangerous game when you start trying to pre predict, well, I'm going to wait for this to hit rock bottom. You know, you could be sitting there in the February. If, I mean, if I was betting money today, I'd bet that February, late February would be the bottom of our market and the spring market will see... If anybody starts to jump in in the spring market and prices start to move, we could see buyers chase the prices right back up. So if I'm a buyer today, I would target late February as a time to get into this market. If I'm a seller, I might hold out for a resurgent spring market and hope there's a bit of a recovery. But if you don't see it early in the spring market, don't hold on because it'll be even lower prices if you wait till August. Okay, good advice. We'll have to watch for all of that. Thanks so much. That's Peter Kinch joining us from our news. It's my pleasure.